If you want to make money selling digital downloads online, a very good marketplace for that would be Creative Fabrica. We've talked about Creative Fabrica a lot in this channel. I also have a Creative Fabrica t-shirt, but I couldn't find it. And that's not relevant. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about getting accepted to Creative Fabrica because you have to submit a portfolio to have a shop there. They don't just approve people just from asking. You can't just automatically open a store. Now, I've started this series of how to sell and create a Fabrica. I think last year, I've had some issues myself. Their dashboard of selling was still in beta when it comes to clashing with affiliate as well as me being a teacher on the platform. And I was also just getting started with selling on my own website since I already have an audience for these things. And I didn't really find the time to do this. But I felt like I was kind of coming back to selling on Creative Fabrica this year for mainly two reasons. The first one is because a lot of you guys have been asking, you've been seeing the first video in the series and wanting to have more and more videos on this topic. And the second reason is that I also find the fact that I have my own website to be kind of, I don't know, exclusive for people who can afford it at the time. And I do have a lot of viewers like you guys that have a Creative Fabrica membership. So if I can upload things there for you guys to basically download for free because it's in the membership. So maybe that feels more like a community vibe to me. So coming back to this series and I'm drifting off because my ADHD is so off today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the portfolio that you need to submit to Creative Fabrica in order to get accepted to sell there. Now, I would like to say three things before we get started with today's video. The first is that this is not a technical video. This is a video covering all the methods that you can use to submit your portfolio to Creative Fabrica. There are actually a lot of references in this video to videos that I made about different methods that you can use to create this portfolio, as well as maybe some information for those of you who already have some online presence, how to... I don't know, quickly tweak that online presence to become something that you can submit to Creative Fabrica. The second thing I would like to say is that in general, if you want to start selling anything online, having a portfolio online, whether you want to sell in Creative Fabrica or not, is quite a good asset. And the third is, again, this is very tailored to Creative Fabrica. I came up with a lot of ideas that were not included in the initial briefing of Creative Fabrica of what a portfolio website is. And I had a one and a half hour call with Larissa from Creative Fabrica. That's my contact. And also Klein stopped by to say hello. So you can say hello to them. They're pretty adorable. Both of them are in our Facebook community if you have any more specific questions. But a lot of this information comes from the call that I had with Larissa and also like really trying to dive deeper into what kind of portfolio should you submit. And it's not just about the method or the platform that you're hosting your portfolio, but it's also what's inside the portfolio that they're looking for from the conversation with Larissa and in my opinion. So we're gonna be covering a lot of things in this video, like how to open a shop, how to make your portfolio. Yes, I'm reading this from a very, very, very long script. What you must have in your portfolio. What is, to my opinion, and from the conversation with Larissa is, a good portfolio. Why should you do all of this just to get accepted to Creative Fabrica? And of course, the rest of the series in a brief in case you want to follow along the series and see what's coming up. And a bunch of tips for me along the way on how to make this a good submission. And again, a good practice when you're submitting your portfolio to pretty much anything. With that said, let's jump in with how to open a store on Creative Fabrica. About a year ago, I made the video of part one where I show how to click on the correct button to open a store. I'm very sorry I cannot do that again. I already have a store on Creative Fabrica, uh, but I'll try to find a clip from that and maybe run it on the screen as B-roll. And basically when you click to open a store, you have to submit links to your portfolio. I really recommend having one link that sort of diverses into more links, and we'll be discussing that in a second, well now, on how to make that portfolio. As I mentioned, we had a very long conversation two days ago, me and Larissa, about how to make your portfolio, how to submit them, and I think I sort of categorized it or divided it into six different options. I think it could also be like three, but six different options. So option number one to submit your portfolio for Creative Fabrica to sell digital downloads on their platform is to actually submit an existing shop that you already have or an existing social media account. Now, when I say an existing shop that you have, I don't think that a red bubble shop is going to be a good idea or an Instagram profile promoting just print on demand products. And the reason for that is Creative Fabrica, when they're looking into your portfolio, they want to see the end product that you will be selling. And yes, in Redbubble, your end product is selling t-shirts, but they want to see the actual clip art, the actual graphics, the Procreate brushes, 
the knitting patterns, whatever you want to sell on Creative Fabrica, they want to see that visible in your portfolio. So if you have a shop on Creative Market and you're already selling graphics or patterns there, if you have a shop on Etsy where you're selling these kinds of digital downloads, these are really good examples for your portfolio on Creative Fabrica, as well as any social media profile that you have that you're promoting the things that you do there. So let's say you have a really nice Instagram account where you occasionally upload things that you've done with Procreate. You've done your own clip art, and that's the clip art that you're interested in selling. So that is definitely an account that you can submit. However, let's say that in the past few months, all you've done with your Instagram is upload photos of your cat or you with your cat. That might not be a good submission. However, that doesn't mean it's going to rule everything out. If you do have a social media presence with Instagram, with TikTok, even with YouTube, But for the past few weeks or months, or basically in the latest feed, you've pretty much been focusing on something else that isn't your art. Just mass upload something that is related to what you're doing. So for example, on Instagram, just upload nine different posts of the things that you plan on selling on Creative Fabrica and you're good. So again, you can use your existing stores, you can use your existing social media profile as long as they are clearly showing the end product that you wish to sell on Creative Fabrica. Option number two is to submit your own website with your own domain or subdomain. Now, for those of you who don't know, domain is what is written in the URL. So right now we are on youtube.com and we also have maytribe.com, which is hosted on Payhip. However, Payhip, for example, is a free shop tool for anyone to open their shop online. Obviously, it's not a marketplace. You do have to bring your own traffic, but it is a wonderful and free tool. And in that tool, you have two options. You can connect your own domain like I did with Maytribe.com, or you can use their subdomain. So it would have been something like Maytribe.payhip.com. This is something that you will also see if you decide to open a free Wix website. It will be like Mayaroyo.wix.com, or if I'm using WordPress.com to have a free website hosted with WordPress. And then in that case, again, maytribe or mayaroyo.wordpress.com. So domains and subdomains are both accepted with Creative Fabrica for you to submit your portfolio. There are actually a lot of tutorials here to help you out with that because I did make a full tutorial on how to sell your printables using Payhip. There is a link to that one down below. There is also a recent tutorial that I did about Hostinger Website Builder, which is to go to Hostinger, which is a hosting and domain platform, get your domain, get your hosting package, and with their website builder, basically build a one-page website that clearly shows what it is that you're doing. There was a full tutorial about that, as well as a full tutorial on how to build that subdomain within WordPress so you can have something for free. And that video, by the way, was made two years ago and the sound is horrendous, so I apologize in advance. When you are submitting your own website as a portfolio, I think it's really, really a cool opportunity because you can also like sort of combine all the links of everything that you're doing there. You have full control over what the person sees, sort of like a storytelling, like a process that you take the person who's looking at this from, hey, I'm creating patterns and these are the patterns. This is how they look on dresses. I'm also creating graphics. This is how it looks when I combine everything. This is some information about me. A website really gives you the opportunity to talk and talk and talk as if you are submitting your portfolio as a physical presentation, talking to someone in a room. And I really do like that option. I think it's the most professional option. But of course, every submission is valid as long as you submit within the parameters of what you need to do. Moving on to option number three, and that's the video I did yesterday, which is to submit a portfolio using Behance. I'm not going to say much about this because we do have a video specifically on Behance. Again, from yesterday, I am going to say that Behance, for those of you who don't know, is a portfolio website for anyone creative to show their portfolio. This is for people from the UI UX industry, graphic designers, illustrators, marketing specialists, website developers, anyone. And a lot of people use Behance to have a portfolio at hand and sort of like this online CV. I feel like Behance in some cases is like LinkedIn, but really specific into the graphic or marketing industry or web dev. And people use their Behance portfolio or their profile on Behance basically to try to promote what they're doing, maybe to get hired as a private illustrator or as a website builder, or maybe even to find a job. I do know a lot of people who make sure that their Behance profile always looks amazing because they're looking for a job and they're going to submit that instead of a CV because you can really just show a lot of visuals. I'm not going to get into what you need to do with Behance because we had that video yesterday and it was a little bit tailored to create a Fabrica. And I will leave a link to that video down below. You can go ahead and watch it after this video to see if Behance is the 
platform that you want to have your portfolio with to submit to Creative Fabrica or just in general. Option number four for submitting your portfolio, and this is where we kind of got creative, is um, Pixabay. I think that a lot of people know Pixabay because it's a website where we go to to find free graphics and free photographs and free clip art, free vector files, free video files. And a lot of people, I feel like, don't understand why would someone put so much stuff there for free because there are profiles on Pixabay who put literally like thousands or tens of thousands of designs. However, the concept of Pixabay, for those of you who don't listen to YouTubers who tell you what you probably want to hear. The concept of Pixabay is to have photos for personal use, <laughs> not for commercial use, or for commercial use that is sort of limited. So I can use pieces of clip art from Pixabay when I'm creating my Instagram post, but I cannot use illustrations from Pixabay and put them on Redbubble and sell t-shirts with them because that's illegal. Now, the people who put their work for free on Pixabay have the option to get money because there is a donation button for PayPal that is on Pixabay. I am thinking about making some kind of video about uploading things to Pixabay and seeing if it really like increases your online presence. And I feel like maybe that would be really cool. Let me know if you guys want me to do that in the comment section down below. But the most amazing thing I see people who have free stock on Pixabay do is that they actually have their own website where they are selling stuff. You can have your own links on Pixabay and this is where they're selling stuff. This is where they do custom illustrations. There was this one illustrator, I think it's Mama Graphic something or Graphic Mama. She does like a bunch of really cool illustrations. And if you go to her website, she can actually illustrate you in different poses for your specific purposes. I feel like having this kind of avenue of free traffic or freebies to give in order to move people on to buy something. I feel like that is a good idea to have regardless of submitting your portfolio to create a Fabrica, the same way that I think that having a Behance portfolio is a good thing regardless of create a Fabrica. But as we are in submitting portfolios to create a Fabrica video so you can sell digital downloads, I have shown Larissa Pixabay. We have discussed it in length and she asked their shop team, I don't know how to call them, and they said, yes, you can definitely submit your Pixabay profile. That's kind of cool. I feel like that would be like the easiest thing to do. The easiest thing truly, because with Behance, you do have this aspect of organizing your portfolio. And with Pixabay, it's just very visible. It's just really fast. And you do have the place, you know, to write a little bit about you and to provide links to your store for people to buy it on products or again, to your Behance profile or to anything else that you do online, whether it's to get accepted to Creative Fabrica, showing them that you have Instagram as well, or after you got accepted, to put the link to your Creative Fabrica store on your Pixabay account. Moving on to option number five, any kind of links website. So for example, Linktree and all of these link in bio pages can actually be a good submission of a portfolio to Creative Fabrica because it, it is basically a place where you can write a little bit about yourself, maybe add a photo or two, as well as, you know, have links to the other things that you're doing. It's kind of a place to organize everything. And I feel like a lot of these things that we're talking about, whether it's a website, whether it's Behance, are generally speaking a place to feature something and also provide links to other things. So that is definitely an option, some kind of website that creates links. So for those of you who know Linktree, you can go ahead and use Linktree. They're also connected to Instagram. So maybe just submit Instagram and there is a Linktree there. But you can also use something like Payhip, again, the free platform to sell anything online, the one I'm using from Matribe.com to sell my own graphics before I opened now my shop on Creative Fabrica and trying to focus on that. And I have done a video on Payhip, as I mentioned before, how to sell digital downloads, but I also made a video on how to create a links page using Payhip, and I will leave a link to that one down below. You might find it useful for the sake of this video. Now, one video that has increasingly gained popularity in this channel was how to create a portfolio using Canva, because Canva has their own website feature or a one-page static website feature that you can use. And after talking to Creative Fabrica, last year, as well as again this year, this is still a submission that you can use. You can go to Canva, you can create some kind of static one-page website, but again, you have to show the things that you know how to do. You have to show the end products that you're going to be selling on Creative Fabrica, and you can use that Canva portfolio website, that one-page website, as a links page to refer people to your Pixabay, to your Behance, to your Instagram, or just again, 
have that storytelling option where you're actually sort of talking to the person who's looking at your portfolio, show a photo of you, show a photo of you creating whatever it is you're creating. For those of you who want to join Creative Fabrica to sell knitting patterns, have photos of you knitting on there and some cool PDF downloadables of knitting patterns. Just really try and be creative when you're submitting some kind of static page, because at the end of the day, that static page needs to be interesting. And and we'll touch a bit more on that when we get to my personal tips on how to make a good portfolio. But to conclude this, any kind of links website is acceptable as long as you do it well. Linktree, a links page with Payhip, or a Canva one-page website that basically has a lot of links. And there was a video about that last year. I will leave a link to that video down below. Only one thing that you probably need to know before watching that video, that video includes a 30-day free trial to Canva Pro. That link is no longer operational because I'm no longer a Canva affiliate. That doesn't mean that I don't like it when you guys use Canva. You guys can use whatever you like. I personally am stopping to use Canva, cancel my pro membership and have canceled my affiliation, my digital affiliate link to Canva. So the link on that video, if you click it, will probably not work. With that said, oh, I didn't, I didn't want to be so dramatic in this video. <laughs> With that said, let's move on to the last option for now, which is option number six. And this is something that, again, I brought up to create a Fabrica if this is something that people can do, and that is actually to submit a YouTube channel. Now, we have mentioned, yes, you can use your social media profiles and you can use your YouTube channel, but what if you don't have a YouTube channel? What if you want to create some kind of video submission where you can talk and show stuff? And that is something that you can do by literally videographing, filming, whatever it is that you want to submit. So for example, ta-da! If I wanted to submit anything relating to Procreate, because this is what I'm doing, all I have to do is literally in my iPad, open this thing here and record my screen. Now, three, two, one, go. And this records my screen. And at this point, what I can do is sort of go over the things that I'm doing. And again, this is recording my screen, not just recording this but I can go over and literally show what kind of things I would want to sell while also talking about it. Let me just uh, turn off the, the screen recorder. Now, if you do something like this, whether you're doing it with Procreate or just even filming your computer screen while showing the files that you want to submit and talking, this is a very alternative way to submit a portfolio. This is actually not a true portfolio. And it will probably be one of those videos where you just upload them to YouTube just for Creative Fabrica to see them and then unlist them. However, recording the screen on most computers is a fairly easy thing to do. You don't actually have to have a professional camera. Oh, the minute I said professional, I put my hand there and then it like, oh, I really need to focus. I really need to uh, find a way to remove that autofocus because it's bumming me out. Obviously, you don't have to have a professional camera as well as a professional microphone. Uh, I didn't have those in the first two years that I was doing YouTube. You obviously don't have to have all of that. You can literally just record your screen while talking to it and then upload it to YouTube and send that as a video, sort of like a video interview to create a Fabrica. Again, that thing that creates that feeling of I'm in the same room with you and I'm presenting to you what I want to basically sell on my store. So that is another cool idea. Now. All of these things that I said will actually not be good portfolios if they don't include two specific things. These are the must-haves of submitting your portfolio to create a Fabrica, the must-have things in your portfolio. And the first is you must have a clear visual, a clear way to explain for someone who works on Creative Fabrica what it is that you're going to be selling. Are you going to be selling t-shirt mock-ups? Are you going to be selling knitting patterns? Are you going to be selling crochet patterns? Are you going to be selling tumbler JPEG files for other people to use for print on demand? Are you going to be selling coloring pages? You really need to make sure that your portfolio emphasizes and features what are the actual things that you're going to be selling on Creative Fabrica. The second thing that you must have in every portfolio is sort of a verification that it's actually yours. I mean, I can go into Creative Fabrica, choose a fake name of some very good artist, and just you know, put their portfolio link. So the way to verify that your portfolio is actually yours is either by adding your email address visible in the portfolio or your last two account digits. And with that, I mean the email address that you used to enter to create a Fabrica. So if it's a different email address, it's not really valid. 
Or once you're in Creative Fabrica and you try to open a shop, you are a member or whatever, you have an account number. So take that account number and display the last two digits of that account number. Personally, I recommend do not put the email address that you use for Creative Fabrica visibly. If you are ever going to visibly show your email address online, you're going to get so much spam emails and you can get like a lot of people trying to defraud you. So I don't recommend that. I do recommend, for example, to add to your Instagram bio or to your, I don't know, about section on Pixabay, your about section on Behance, something like CFID ends with, I don't know, three, four or four, five or whatever it actually ends in your case. Again, the last two digits of your personal account on Creative Fabrica. And this is something that you can put there and obviously later on remove. However, if you are submitting, I don't know, a Canva website, a Lynx website, your own website, your Behance portfolio, and it does link to other social accounts, to other profiles, to other portfolios, please make sure that you have this CFID ends with and the number that it ends with on all of them, because this is, again, the way of a Creative Fabrica representative to make sure that you are, in fact, are the person who is making this. This is actually your portfolio, and you didn't just, you know, steal someone else's portfolio to submit and get accepted to Creative Fabrica. Now, okay, we have a website, we have a Behance account, we have Pixabay, we have Instagram, you made your own video, but what is actually a good portfolio? Other than, you know, that must have these two digits and the actual end product. So I made a list of what I think you need to have in your portfolio, again, in my opinion, to better your chances. And I think, you know, some of these things are not going to really, I don't know, fit everything you want to sell, but bear with me. So the first thing is that it needs to show variety. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, but I only do coloring pages. Cool. Have a variety of coloring pages. Show a variety either in the style that you're submitting or in the product types that you're going to sell. For example, I can show a variety by having watercolor clip art, kawaii clip art, acrylic clip art, or I can show variety by having watercolor illustrations, watercolor backgrounds, and watercolor seamless patterns. But make sure to show a little bit of variety and don't just submit something that looks identical to each other or just very little products. Because again, they want you to come into the platform to sell. They're going to need to see that you have things to sell. Tip number two, your portfolio needs to speak to the person from Creative Fabrica. So if it's possible, maybe try to reference it to them. Think about your about section and whatever you're submitting to be kind of like a small cover letter when you're trying to apply for a job. So for example, I would put in my portfolio, if I'm submitting it to Creative Fabrica, hey, I'm May, I love creating digital illustrations, clip art, and backgrounds using Procreate, and I would love to sell them online for people to use them for commercial purposes. This feels like, you know, this person wants to be on this platform and they have something to do on this platform. And from my experience as an HR, I can definitely tell you that people who wrote, I'm looking for a full-time job, Uh, working these hours as was like, okay, so you submitted to the right job. Just try to make it a little bit, I don't know, speak to the person. You know, these are people at the other end of this submission, the people who are going over these shop submissions. It's not robots and machines. So try to address them as people. And it's not just addressing the person from Creative Fabrica as an actual person. It's also actually addressing Everyone who comes into your portfolio, whether it's on Pixabay or on Instagram or on Behance, they will know what you do because they would listen to you because you're talking to them. And now I'm talking to you guys for a long time, so I need water. It's so hot in here. Tip number three is photos. And when I say photos, I mean two kinds of photos. One, a photo of you smiling. (laughs) Now, I'm not going to tell you that if you don't have a photo of you in your submission, they're not going to accept you. I feel like everybody has the right to remain anonymous if they choose to, but you cannot beat a smile online. You just can't beat a smile. I feel like that was a cringe smile. I apologize. The second photo that you can submit and that I feel like are good for submissions or to have in your portfolio are sort of like these collage photos, something like what I do when I'm selling on Maytribe or even on Creative Fabrica, as well as photos of mock-ups. And the reason why I'm saying this is because, again, if this is a portfolio that you want to submit to get accepted to selling on Creative Fabrica, having mock-up photos, having different styles of photos, 
different ways in which you edit the elements that you want to use or that you want to feature or that you want to sell. It shows the person that is reviewing your portfolio that is working for Creative Fabrica, hey, this designer will know how to actually have a listing and feature it on Creative Fabrica. Because if you know how to create really good kneading patterns, but you have no idea how to take a JPEG photo of it, plus a photo of the sweater or whatever thing you knitted in it, and create a really engaging photo, you're not going to be successful selling on Creative Fabrica or anywhere for that matter. Because you do need to learn how to display these to actual people. And there will be a video about that as well. Tip number four is to make sure that everything you've submitted is actually accessible. And again, this is something that I mentioned when I was talking about Instagram. So make sure that the top of the page, wherever someone is entering, they can clearly see first thing, the things that you're going to be selling, because maybe they won't endlessly scroll down everything to see what you're going to sell. These are people, they're short on time. I feel like I was doing the same thing when I was an HR manager. I remember getting CVs of people where half the first page is like their experience working at an ice cream store when they were 16, as well as volunteering in a hospital, which is awesome, but it has nothing to do with the job you, you submitted for. And at the end of the day, we're all just people. And I can definitely tell you that as an HR, I wouldn't read every single CV all the way through because otherwise I wouldn't have any time to do my actual job. But every time we were looking for someone to hire for the company and you get like a thousand CVs, I would like skim through them briefly to look for the keywords of the things that I want, if there was a visual or something like that. So I really recommend to make sure that flat out, the minute they come into your portfolio or the, any link that you submitted, they realize what you want to sell on Creative Fabrica, flat out. Tip number five, a good portfolio is a unique one. Now, I'm not saying everybody submits with Behance. Don't submit with Behance. No, I'm saying that the actual items that you want to sell, are they unique? I mean, think about it this way. If you were in a marketplace and everybody is selling watercolor Christmas gnomes, and then you got a submission from someone who wants to sell, I don't know, white flowers and another person who want to sell watercolor Christmas gnomes, who would you prefer to accept? I mean, if you are designing the same thing that everyone else is designing, that could be probably a reason why you won't get accepted because the marketplace doesn't want more and more people selling the same thing. Try to show how your work is unique or different than what anyone else is selling. Obviously, it doesn't have to be the most unique and the most different. And yes, a lot of us are selling paper packs that are similar to each other, but try to show in your style and your different way of doing things because... No one's going to buy your stuff, even if you get accepted, if it just looks like everyone else's. Tip number six, and I do not believe I have to say this, do not display copyright material or anything infringing on intellectual property. Yes, it's very nice that you can illustrate Angelina Jolie, but you cannot sell it. And yes, if you're very much into Barbie right now, that doesn't mean you can sell it on Creative Fabrica. Also, just because other people are selling it and somehow got away from the Creative Fabrica compliance team taking this down... Again, doesn't mean that this is allowed. So if you're going to submit a portfolio that includes Mickey Mouse or anything that is copyright infringement, you're probably not going to get accepted. You know, they're trying to avoid people doing that on their platform. So I recommend not to do that. Tip number seven, and it feels kind of weird. Be open-minded about your possibilities and also sometimes about your lack of possibilities. And I feel like this is something that a lot of people struggle with. It's like, you know, I have to be on this platform. No, you don't. It's just another platform for you to expand your business. It's good to be on multiple platforms. You have multiple streams of income. It's amazing. However, you made the portfolio. You've submitted it to Creative Fabrica. Continue living your life. And I feel like this is weird. I've had viewers of the channel send me messages, DMs, and even comments when I made the initial video on how to sell on Creative Fabrica. They were like, I submitted my portfolio three days ago and they haven't gotten back to me. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, carry on with your life. Carry on with your life. Carry on with whatever it is you thought about doing. You can have stores on multiple platforms online. I'm uploading a lot of the things that I did upload to Maytribe.com to Creative Fabrica. I am doing it in a different way and I'll discuss it in a video, but I am uploading a lot of the things that I'm already using for print on demand that I've made in the past. And if I wasn't accepted to Creative Fabrica, guess what? I would still upload a lot of these things to Zazzle or to my own website. 
submit the application and carry on with your life. And not just that. I also know that a lot of people who are blocked in their head when it comes to, oh, they didn't think I'm good enough or they didn't even reply to me. I had a viewer DM me a few days ago that she submitted a portfolio. She got no response. And about two weeks after she noticed that the open a shop button is active again. In the time that has passed between, she actually gotten better in some of the things that she was doing. She took some more online classes. So she changed her portfolio link, submitted again, and then got accepted. Be open-minded to the possibility of this being one of your income streams or to the possibility that this might not be one of your income streams. We are building this kind of huge pizza <laughs> when we're trying to make money online and I don't know. I feel like a lot of people are just focusing on one thing and one thing only, which is so dumb because none of these platforms belong to us. The internet can crash. And also every platform has its own kind of audience. And you really do need to think about diversifying your income stream. So don't take it too hard. You can always reapply. You can always learn from it. And I'm sorry, but if you didn't create something good enough or you didn't convey the message of what you were creating in the best way or in a good way, then you probably wouldn't have sold it anyway. Really work on making your art look good, making your graphics look good, your patterns, your knitting patterns, I don't know, whatever it is that you want to submit. Really work on making that look good when you submit it and don't blame anyone if you don't get accepted. Just learn from that that I need to get better. I see this in a lot of cases with a lot of platforms for people who are selling on Etsy. Oh, selling printables on Etsy is a scam because I have so many printables there and no one's buying it. There is a reason why no one is buying it. There are three reasons why no one is buying your stuff or no one accepted you for a job or no one approved your portfolio. One, your rates are too high. Two, your work is not good enough. Or three, you're not doing marketing and no one can find you. It's not because it's a scam. So I really want you to have that mindset when you apply to Creative Fabrica or when you open a store anywhere or a website about anything to sell anything or to promote anything online. It's just a really good mindset to have. Now with me saying this and um, these tips, I feel like a lot of things that come up from that is why would I do all that just to sell on Creative Fabrica? I mean, why would I open my Payhip store or a Payhip account where I can actually sell my own stuff? Why would I do that just to sell on Creative Fabrica? Why would I have this amazing Behance portfolio and all of these cool stuff to sell on Creative Fabrica? And for that, I have two things to tell you. One, it's not just for Creative Fabrica. I mean, again, if you made that Payhip website to sell your own stuff and submitting it as a portfolio for Creative Fabrica, you can still sell it on your own and sell on Creative Fabrica. You can still use these portfolios and these websites to get accepted for jobs, to get hired to do some kind of commission work and to promote the other things that you're doing that are not on Creative Fabrica. And the second thing that you'll get from this is honestly experience in doing stuff. <laughs> I feel like it's so dumb, but I'm talking to friends here all the time and the complex that I live in. We have a lot of people from different countries, digital nomads coming here, and they all have online businesses. And whenever we talk about a certain topic, and I'm like, oh, you can do this. And they're like, how do you know? Because I've done it before. I've done it before. The reason why I have so much knowledge about so many things is because I've done so many things. So guess what? Maybe you're going to submit a portfolio to create a Fabrica and you get accepted, but hey, you can post a Fiverr gig on how to build someone else's Behance portfolio. Maybe you would learn in the process how to get better at building websites. There are so many things that while you are creating this to get accepted to Creative Fabrica, whether it's a YouTube video, learning how to film your screen, whether it's working on your Instagram profile, making better mock-ups for what you want to sell, there are so many educational pieces in that when you submit to Creative Fabrica that have nothing to do with getting accepted or selling there. And the best example I have to tell you is that I have been wanting to learn video editing for years. And you know when I started learning video editing? When I had a video to edit when I started this channel. Mind you, I'm not the best video editor ever. I'm using one of the crappiest softwares that you can use. But having a video to edit taught me how to edit videos. Having a platform to submit your portfolio to will teach you how to create a portfolio. Which, again, I think goes back to mindset. We're talking about a pie. We're talking about a pizza, a big pizza, and I'm very hungry right now, that contains multiple streams of income. You need to learn how to put these things in one place, in one link. Even if you're doing print on a man and you're selling on Redbubble and Society6 and TeePublic, you need to learn how to create a links page 
to refer people to all of them from your social media accounts. You need to learn how to have a good social media account. Nothing in the process of creating any of these portfolios to submit to Creative Fabrica is going to be a waste of time because it's going to be hella educational. Why am I so pumped up? <laughs> Now, if you've decided to sell on Creative Fabrica and you're really interested in that, other than the fact that I'm going to leave a lot of links down below on, again, how to do a website with Payhip, how to create your own portfolio on Behance, I am thinking about doing something with Pixabay. I'm still looking for your comments if you want me to do like a review over what to do with a Pixabay account, what you can do from one side of it as a person who downloads the images and wants to use them, and what you can do as a person who, you know, wants to be featured there, please let me know in the comments. And while you're there, if you kind of like this video or found this content useful, please hit the like button down below. Every time you do that, it really does help my channel and subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. Moving on to future content that we're going to have on Creative Fabrica, sort of like recapping in advance what this series is going to have, because I know that a lot of people have a lot of questions and I feel like I want to prevent the whole, will you make a video about this comment? I'll just tell you. And if the video that you're thinking or the content that you need is not in these mentioned uh, series parts, you can go ahead and request that. So the next part, part three, hopefully next week is going to be what to actually sell on Creative Fabrica. And believe it or not, there are so many people who don't know the extent of everything you can sell on Creative Fabrica as a digital download. Part number four is going to cover how to actually upload a listing, sort of like, you know, what we do for Etsy, but with Creative Fabrica, we're going to be discussing that. I'm going to show you some techniques on how to design that listing, preferably to multiple types of products. So honestly, it would kind of help me out if you could comment down below what do you want to sell on Creative Fabrica? Because that will give me ideas to help you create that listing page, like how it looks to create the actual cover page of it. So I can use examples of the things that you actually want to sell. So it would really, really help me help you if you comment down below what you want to sell on Creative Fabrica. That will be part four. Part five will cover some tips and tricks that I have regarding selling anywhere, especially on Creative Fabrica. There's so many cool stuff within their system that you can do and, you know, to improve your chances of selling or to get more money. And part number six for this period of time is the last part of the series. It will be me sharing what items I chose to sell on Creative Fabrica and why I chose to be on Creative Fabrica in a lot more detail than what I said in the beginning, even though I do have my own website. What am I uploading there? What am I uploading into Creative Fabrica? How I'm sort of using this content, the things that I'm uploading in the best way that I can, whether it's with my own print and demand or when I'm selling it to anyone on Creative Fabrica or on my own website. And mostly like why I chose to do both, because I feel like everybody forgets again the mentality of having multiple streams of income and multiple pieces of the pizza. And I feel like I definitely know what I'm going to have for breakfast today after I finish filming this video. Pizza. This video was really long. And I'm I'm really into pizza right now for some reason. And I still have to go and edit this video and upload it. And I always feel like a time traveler watching myself say that. And probably my camera is about to overheat and die. So with that being said, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy submission to Creative Fabrica or happy portfolio creating to anything. I would love your thoughts again in the comments or your ideas of what you want to sell to better help me help you. Thank you so much for watching this incredibly long video. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Why should you do all this just to get upset? Good? It's just to get upset. Good. And whenever we talk about it, what's wrong with my hair? But the, but the most amazing... Ugh, what happened to my microphone? No. Every breath you take... Every portfolio you make. <laughs> so dumb. But the most, ah, the most amazing thing I see. Every single day, every word you say, I'll be watching you.